Right, so now that we've worked with vectors quite a bit, we're going to actually apply it to two-dimensional motion. And so we're going to start with a velocity vector. We're going to say that something's going at a velocity of 20 meters per second. And we'll say the direction is uh, 30 degrees north of east. Okay, so, um, and I actually... Um, there's a way also that we can kind of um, model this using Desmos. I'm going to show you that as well because I'm hoping that will help us to kind of understand what's going on. Because just the idea of breaking velocity and components is kind of confusing. Okay? Also, sometimes when we're using a coordinate plane, we can just say reference things to the x axis. So if this is positive x and that's negative x, up here would be above positive x, whereas down here would be below positive x. This area here would be below negative x. What would this area be called? Above positive x, or sorry, above negative x, okay? So anyway, um, we're going to start by taking this velocity vector and breaking it into components. And so we need to go ahead and write this velocity vector and unit vector notation okay so go ahead and do that real quick okay so we're using sine and cosine here the vector would look something like this 20 meters per second this is the angle so this would be about 17.9 this is 10 we find each of these by multiplying 20 times cosine of theta and 20 times sine of theta. Okay, and so now we have this velocity vector and unit vector notation, and we're going to use it to, um, well, first of all, so again, looking back at our coordinate plane, if this is our velocity vector, okay, and you see something basically going 30 meters per second, well, we're projecting it to the horizontal axis, so if you're standing right here, the object is going 30 meters per second like this. To the person standing here, it only looks like they're going about 17.9 meters per second. And to the person standing right here, it looks like they're going about 10 meters per second. Okay, so I'm going to plug this into um, Desmos, and so hopefully that will kind of make some sense for us. Okay, okay so using Desmos, we can make something called the parametric function. And so basically, we're going to tell the graph what coordinates to plot something at using the equation we just wrote. So for i direction it was 17.9 was the velocity and so the way we'd find position given the velocity is take that and multiply by the time. Okay and so we use t. And then we have a second coordinate okay that represents the y position and so for that we're going to use the other value that we 10 meters per second, but again we have to multiply by t, okay, <clears throat> in order to turn to position. Now, when we use the letter t here, Desmos gets a little bit confused, um, and so we're actually use t1, okay, so that will bring up a slider, because we want it to bring up a slider. All right, so we're going to put in time zero as our starting point, and we'll say it will go to maybe like 10 seconds, okay? So when we play this, we also want to set it so it only goes one way and so you can see it's jumping away off the screen so we have to zoom this thing way in okay it should be let's get a little bit further that's too far okay so now we play it and you can see it this is 30 meters per second 30 degrees north of east now we can also make it so that it shows the motion in the two axes independent of each other. So let's go ahead and paste this in. And we're just going to make this one be the horizontal axis. Okay. So if you look, you can see the x component here. Okay, it's directly mirroring it along the x axis. So this piece right here is covering a shorter amount of distance in the same amount of time it's going slower so this one right here is only going 17.9 meters per second we can add another one 
for y, okay, and this one would only be going 10 meters per second, but it'd be going up on the y-axis, okay? So when I play it, it's looking something like this. Okay, so this one's going the slowest, and this one's going the next slowest. Okay, but this one right here and this one right here together make their combined motion like this. Okay, and so the point of this is that the resultant of these two pieces, the i and the j, gives us our velocity vector, but when we're talking about velocity in a physics sense, we really need to focus on just x and y, just i and j. And we're going to look at them separately because we can actually isolate them and talk about them separate from each other. Okay, and so it's helpful to be able to create a position function so that we can use Desmos like this to model it so we can get an idea what the motion looks like. Okay, and so in this case that's what the motion looks like and we use our kind of our two components here to come up with it. Okay, so now that we've done this once, we're going to do this again with a much more complex example. Okay, so here we have a scenario. There's an object being accelerated in two dimensions. The xy plane means two dimensions. Okay, and it's got, it's telling us about its acceleration. So <clears throat> to save us a little bit of time, we've been actually given things in terms of components, i and j, instead of in the magnitude direction notation. And then it gives us our initial velocities as well. Okay, and then it says, what is the velocity of the object when it has its greatest x position? All right, so what we can do here is if we're going to model this in Desmos, and if really the same thing here, if we're going to be able to analyze this situation, we want to write functions, okay? So I'm going to write the functions for x for velocity and position, and I'm going to have you go ahead and write the functions for y, okay? So to write a function for position, and we'll actually use displacement, I'm going to use this equation here. And then for velocity, I'm going to use this one right here. Okay, and so again, I'm going to do the ones for x, and then you can do the ones for y. Okay, so for displacement, initial velocity is 8 meters per second. Plus 1 half acceleration is negative 2 meters per second squared. And times t squared, so we simplify, we get... 8t plus, or we'll just say, what just happened there? Alright, right, 8t minus um, t squared, okay, for this, for position function or displacement. And then for vx, we're going to say, <coughs> V naught is 8 meters per second, and A is so be minus 2 meters per second squared times T. Okay, go ahead and find my Y function for position or displacement and for velocity. Okay, so for this one, you would have got 4 meters per, or so we'll just say 4T plus. 2.5 t squared, and then for this one you got we got 4 t plus 5. Sorry, that's backwards. 4 plus 5 t. Okay. And for now we're just going to focus on the position functions. Okay, and we're going to model these, and then we'll talk about finding the velocity object when it has its greatest x position. Okay, so I'm actually going to do this one a little bit differently. So when we make our coordinates here, um, we can actually, instead of typing the function here, we can actually define the function separately. And, and that can maybe save us some space and some complications there. So I'm going to type in the function x1 right here and the function y1 right here so that we can, and then it's basically going to like show them up here. Okay, so I'm going to do that real quick, and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so here I have our two functions, 
Our function for the horizontal position looks like this. Our function for the vertical position looks like this. It's actually showing them on the same uh, like axis. It's both showing on the vertical axis. Once we get it set up, this one's going to get rotated to represent the horizontal position this way. Okay. And so let's go ahead and do that and add another row. Okay, I'll move this one up to the top. And it's going to be just x1, comma, y1. Okay, so now it wants to add a slider. And so I'll control this by saying it will start at 0. And we'll maybe, we'll have it go up to about 8. Okay. Um, once I get it going, I want to change it so it's only going forward. I'm going to slow it down a little bit. Okay. And I'll adjust the screen so we can see it. And then, real quick, I'm going to just add a bunch of functions here, a blank one, so we can get those um, counters out of the screen because they're pretty obnoxious. Okay, so we can scroll up here and we can ignore the, that part down there. And then also, so that we can kind of see what's going on a little bit, we're going to add, just like before, so we can look at X and Y separately at the same time. Okay. Okay, so when we run this, we can now kind of see what's going on with each direction. So horizontally, you can see it's kind of going out, slowing down, and then it's coming back. Okay, whereas in the y direction, it starts off slow, increases its speed, going faster, 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 at the same time that this is coming back. So you can see it kind of curves out and then comes back in. So this is what the, the motion of this particle looks like. Okay, and honestly, to answer this question, we don't really have to know this. We just have to know, look at the keywords and kind of think about what they're saying. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do right now. So if we look back here, it says, what is the velocity of the object when it has its greatest x position? Well, if we look back, the point at which it has its greatest x position is somewhere like right around here you can see it's slowing down a lot there okay and that's a hint when it slows down like that it's at its greatest position that means it's like peaking and then turning around so it's going to go this way slow down then speed up the other way so we know that at that point when the position in the x direction is greatest is where that x velocity is zero okay and so coming back to here it says, what's the velocity object when it has its greatest x position? What I can do is I can say, okay, well, at what time is my velocity in the x direction equal to 0? So I can say 0 equals 8 minus 2t. t is going to be equal to 4 seconds. Okay, and then I can find the velocity at 4 seconds. I already know that for x, that velocity is going to be equal to 0. So v would be equal to 0, i, and then for y, I'm going to put 4 in for the 5, giving me 20 plus 4, and so that's going to be 24 meters per second change. And that's the answer to this question, okay? Because that horizontal velocity was 0 at the moment at which it had its greatest horizontal position. It was turning around there, okay? And um, this is a really high-level question, and so it, it's okay if you're a little bit confused by this. Two-dimensional motion is tricky. It's confusing, okay? And I think it's probably the hardest thing we cover all year. 